Good morning, Internet. My name is Jack C. Today we will be looking at a paper called Molecular Contrastive Learning of Representations of Wire Graph Neural Networks by these folks in the Carnegie Mellon University. To start off, molecular machine learning is used for efficient molecular property prediction and it analyzes vast molecular data to enable accurate predictions of molecular properties like solubility and bioactivity. By uncovering hidden patterns, it guides the design of new compounds by reducing experimental failures. It has the potential to revolutionize drug discovery and advance medical science. But acquiring labeled molecular data is a very costly operation. Because of the scarcity of labeled data, it has been a great challenge to create supervised learning methods that can generalize effectively across the vast chemical space. There are several ways to represent molecules, such as fingerprint vectors, smiles, and chemical graphs. Chemical graph neural network is what you would want to use as it outperforms the rest of the approaches in preserving chemical structural information, which you can use for a chemical property prediction. But it requires a ton of labeled data to do so. To mitigate this issue, we can pre-train the model on unlabeled data set by using self-supervised learning approaches like we see in BERT, and grand graph and contrastive learning. So the authors wanted to create a way to improve the contrastive learning technique that is used to pre-train the chemical neural network models. Thus they created MoClear, which is a self-supervised learning framework. Here's how contrastive learning works. Imagine you have a bunch of unlabeled images and you want your model to learn to recognize different objects in them. With contrastive learning, you essentially create positive pairs of similar images, let's say a pair of dot pictures and a negative pair of dissimilar images like a dot and a cat. Then the model is trained to map similar images close together in the learned representation space while pushing the similar images farther apart. Contrastive learning takes advantage of this inherent information present in the data itself. To do that, first, they scrape 10 million unlabeled molecules from PubChem and then they use it to pre-train the graph neural network models by it more clear to learn representative features, which is then followed by a supervised fine-tuning process for downstream molecular property prediction tasks. The more clear pre-training approach is all about taking a bunch of molecules and converting them into molecular graphs. Then we apply some fancy graph augmentation tricks to create two related versions of the same graph. We use a special feature encoder that uses graph convolutions and a readout function to extract representations. To make sure that these representations are useful, we use something called NT-Zen loss that help us to compare the latent vectors from the MLP projection heads. The NT-Zen loss, short for Normalized Temperature Scale Cross Entropy Loss, is a modification of the traditional contrastive loss to address the challenges posed by large-scale datasets. It has a temperature parameter and a normalization factor to improve the robustness and scalability of contrastive loss. Um, by maximizing the similarity between the positive pairs and minimizing the similarity between the negative pairs, this loss function encourages the model to learn meaningful representations that capture useful information about the data. In MoClear, they use three augmentation strategies to improve the graph data, atom masking, bond deletion, and subgraph removal. Atom masking randomly masks atoms from the graph, um, while the bond deletion randomly removes the chemical bonds, uh, which mimics uh, the bond breaking in chemical reactions. On the other hand, we have the subgraph removal 
uh, strategy which helps by removing a certain subgraph of the entire graph. As shown on the slide, MoClear outperforms other methods in five out of seven benchmarks in classification tasks. And not only that, but it also shows comparable performance to supervised learning methods. Overall, it surpasses state-of-the-art techniques in some benchmarks and even helped to improve the ROC AUC by 2.7% compared to DMPNN. And the same case happens to be true again for the regression benchmarks. As you can see that the MoClear strategy outperforms other pre-training methods in five out of six benchmarks, and it holds its ground against supervised learning models too. With the three different types of uh, graph augmentation methods that they created, they also investigated them by comparing each one of them to the results that they got. So as it turns out, subgraph removal with a 25% ratio performed the best on average, but it didn't perform that well on the triple BP dataset due to its sensitivity to topological changes. Look, combining all three augmentations really hurt the performance compared to just using subgraph removal. Overall, subgraph removal seems to be a a pretty good choice, but the optimal augmentation strategy is always test dependent. Also, they tested out GIM models with and without molecular graph augmentations from random initialization using subgraph masking. GIM models with augmentations clearly outperform models without augmentations on all benchmarks, improving the score by 7.2%. This augmentation significantly enhanced performance on supervised molecular pr property prediction tasks. This helps them to learn robust and representative features by finding important motives within the remaining subgraphs. All right, here's the fun part. They visualize the chemical representations learned by MoClear using TSNE. The representations were extracted from a validation set of 100,000 unique molecules, right? Each point in the visualization corresponds to a molecule and is colored based on its molecular weight. We can see that the molecules with similar structures and functional groups are located closely to each other in the representation space. This suggests that MoClear might be actually able to learn intrinsic connections between molecules without relying on labeled data. How fascinating is that, huh? And that is all, folks. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next one. Cheers.